Hello everyone, my name is Tamara Toledo. I am the director curator of Sur Gallery and we are here to see Overcoming Otherness with artists Francisco Gonzalez Rosas, Elena Martin Franco, Diana Rosa, Juan de Dios Mora, and Naum Flores. This exhibition tackles issues of identity and um, interpretations of what mestizaje is uh, and challenges the perceptions of mestizaje. The exhibition attempts to step away from these fetishized and preconceived notions of identity and of mestizaje at a time when many of us are asked to self-identify and this self-identification process has brought forward uh, difficult and challenging conversations because not all are willing to, um, to take that step and not all are willing to have that conversation. So when we speak of ideas of mestizaje and identity in the context of Latin America in particular, what immediately comes to mind is colonialism and the effects it has had over its population. We also think of the effects of neoliberalism. After all, Latin America has been known to be the laboratory of neoliberalism. And so with that in mind, it is clear that identity is not fixed. It's multi-layered, it's complex and um, challenging when placed specifically in the context of the diaspora, and we're thinking about it in the context of Canada in this case. Latin America has a long history of colonialism. Its case system of classifying and ranking identity based on ethnicity. It has genocidal practices with indigenous people, uh, slavery and black racism and the white ruling classes that undermine the poor and enrich the colonizer, which, which is a mentality and a practice that still persists today. So as a diaspora, we carry this history with us where exploitation uh, might be disguised as salvation, as progress, as modernization. We also need to understand that within this diaspora, not all Latin Americans are treated the same way. Gender, race, ethnicity, background, social classes, and other factors determine the lives and the paths that we are, are granted within a place like Canada. And unfortunately, we face struggles based on those categories. And we can't pretend that we either get along with each other as Latin Americans or that we share common political ideologies. Um, we are not homogeneous and the region is composed of, you know, such a diverse um, uh, people. If we want to begin to shift our understanding uh, and decolonize our way of thinking from using the articulation of discovery um, of Latin America and change that narrative to instead um, an invention, we can begin to shift that, um, that geopolitics of knowledge that Walter Mignolo has, has uh, spoken of. And this idea of Latin America, as many of us know, is a construction. It's an invention, as I mentioned, built on this premise of a European expansion and modernization. Um, the label of Latin America, after all, has, was invented by and labeled by the French in the 19th century um, in order to distinguish the region with um, those that spoke Latin, um, Latin languages. And mestizaje is another problematic term that is, has been used to erase indigenous and black lives within the region. It is also part of this modernity project uh, of denying and erasing ancestral knowledge in order to modernize the, the new world. So I just wanted to give you some context uh, of what I was thinking when I began to curate this exhibition. I was looking for artists 
that were also either directly or indirectly looking at ideas of otherness within this sort of construction and invention. And I was thinking about uh, how many of us from the Global South are continue to per be perceived as other in a place like Canada. Now, with that all said, um, I also have to reiterate that not all share this exclusionary treatment. And we must also understand that there are many Latin Americans who are descendants of European backgrounds and in a way pass as white um, and therefore share the privileges of this identifications um, that comes with, with that privilege. But for those who don't, perhaps because of the color of their skin, their accent, um, their body language, their expressions, their cultural and social interactions, all of those become markers that determine a preconceived, um, stereotyped uh, understanding of who they are and, and where they come from. So my intention with this exhibition was to really challenge and defy preconceived notions of identity, of representation, of mestizaje. And I think that the artists that are part of this exhibition offer new ways of um, understanding otherness uh, by challenging those preconceived notions and uh, offering new ways of understanding uh, by incorporating the multiplicity, the complexity, and the nuanced uh, aspects of diaspora. So I thought we could start with the artist Naum Flores, who's from Honduras, but is Toronto-based. Um, and he offers the work uh, on vinyl entitled Garden of Misfits. He offers dismem dismembered bodies, the wounded subject, the wanderer that is always outside of place. He himself is a refugee um, who carries with him this burden and this trauma of displacement. The otherness, quote unquote, here that, we, that he explores is within diaspora. He's navigating a challenging and disorienting landscape surrounded by other subjects that share his same fate. Um, so in the piece, he sees a landscape that, um, that is already reflected on the window. We see the gate, the bushes, the buildings that are, you know, that surround the pieces with, um, with the subjects in black um, that have animal limbs, without appendages, with unidentifiable traits, and they're spread throughout the surface of the gallery windows. We see this uh, collective presence of otherness. There are many fraudulent misconceptions, as I mentioned, uh, of what the Latin American diaspora looks like or behaves like. And Naum, in this case, offers us a view of this diaspora and claims it to be a garden of misfits. So the title is an appropriation of Bach's uh, The Garden of Earthly Delights, but rather than indulging in decadence as seen in that master painting of the 16th century, Naum has his subjects wander in a void, which also speaks to this emptiness and uncertainty created by, by modernity. So beside Naum, I have placed Jose de Dios Mora, who is a US-based artist um, based in San Antonio, Texas, um, but is originally from Mexico. I think it is very important to consider border thinking um, and the artists who are dealing directly with um, with border thinking by referencing this geopolitical issue in their work because it accounts for those repressive systems of power that lie deep in the migrants' experience and, and psyche. It is also an unavoidable condition for indigenous people and uh, those of African descendants 
um, as well as for many of us who uh, live in diaspora. I have selected two lino cuts, prints from 2012 with a particular um, message of futurism. Both images capture a future in space, where even uh, then this place of border contestation is present, where border patrols and so-called you know, aliens live and die regardless, where la raza finds refuge deep inside in the universe within ancestral knowledge and continue to survive despite the ongoing oppression. I have also selected a series of small linocut portraits of luchadores libres. Um, this series captures these luchadores with respect and with admiration. He's placing popular culture within the realm of the uh, gallery space. The subjects also adopt animal identities. And you can see that in, in the titles that he's given, um, given them. They don't necessarily wear masks, but adopt the character and the animal uh, as their own. Juan rejects uh, categories based on ethnicity and race, and instead he makes connections to tradition, to nature, to land, and to our connection to other species. You know, and when speaking about you know, connections to, to animals, to land, to ancestry, um, that leads me to the artist of Elena Martin Franco, uh, who is a Colombian artist uh, from the Caribbean um, and is a Montreal-based uh, artist. And she um, offers three artworks for us, um, which all speak to each other through, through one of her fictional characters, which is uh, Mujer Elefante, Elephant Woman. She has other fictional characters as well, like Frita Caro, Corazón Desfasado. But for this particular exhibition, I have um, included uh, Mujer Elefante. And in this character, she embodies mestizaje, but questions its origins, its limitations. It, she exposes its nuances and its epistemic racism and sexism. She um, positions herself clearly as a Colombian woman from the Caribbean. Uh, navigating these spaces of erasure and of invisibility. She presents a different vision of a uh, mestiza artist and what it may be within the context of Canada. She names invisibility in Canada. She questions patriarchal and colonial systems. And she challenges us to think about our positionality in Canada. The video performance El Se Tromp, which literally means she is wrong, is also a play of words because tromp means trunk, as in an elephant trunk. So she carries this trunk as a burden, as a weight that ties her to this chair in the performance. And this can be interpreted as her female position, as her position as a woman in a patriarchal system that places her static, uh, places are in constant uh, discomfort. Her message is even more obvious with her piece Sentada entre dos sillas, which means sitting between two chairs, because it's specifically guided by this narrative, um, a journey she shares with us living as a Colombiana Caribeña in Quebec. Hoy tengo la percepción que Montreal es una imbrincación de colonizaciones que no han sido sanadas, que aún están buscando cómo nombrarse adecuadamente. So in addition, I also asked her to exhibit a series of watercolors that she did uh, with this character of the elephant woman with Mujer Elefante, and it's entitled A Study of Elephant Women in a White Cube. This series of watercolors, where she also incorporates some tempera, 
on paper are not only aesthetically beautiful, but they also tell a story. It's a dialogue that she portrays through body movements, through her different positions. The elephant woman is depicted explicitly in these paintings with an elephant head and an elephant trunk attached to uh, female bodies. And the struggle here is internal, it's familial. Um, not so preoccupied with a conversation necessarily, but an introspective process that the artist handles through these various uncomfortable positions of her body within the white square of the paper. And of course, that alludes to the white cube of the gallery space in which she finds herself constrained. Um, she finds herself invisible and erased within a larger um, art canon. So here we have Diana Rosa, who also offers uh, depictions of paintings. She's using acrylic on canvas. And the piece here, the triptych that we're seeing, is called Walking in the Jungle. Her approach is different than Helena's um, and adopts a modernism aesthetic, which references the dominance of Western culture within Latin America. Diana is a Cuban-born artist. She studied art history in Santiago de Cuba and settled in Brampton, Ontario, where she began to paint. Her paintings are colorful. They're autobiographical interpretations of relationships. She explores questions of identity and includes landscapes that are quite foreign to the North American general audience. Um, her paintings may be interpreted uh, perhaps as exoticized other with its birds, its vegetation, and its animals, but these are all spaces of memory, of belonging, and of identification. You can almost smell the wayaba, you can feel the heat, and hear the familiar sounds that the painting projects. Here we have Let It Bloom, which projects these same kind of sensations, but in addition, the painting also touches on this subject of colonialism that I spoke of. <clears throat> these two figures, subjects, are confined to a colonial past, tied to its dogmas, and restrained by its idealizations. Um, the overall white tint of the entire um, uh, painting also alludes to that. But they can't be tied because their souls and their minds sprout these enormous cacti, a plant that does not require much water, but that may live for a very long time. It's resilient, it defends itself with its prickles. So despite the cacti not being necessarily a plant that is common in Cuba, the artist adopts this plant as a metaphor of resilience and of resistance. Despite having colonial histories and legacies of genocide, this fruit endures the pain and, the, the, and continues to, to struggle despite this history of colonialism. And finally, to end the tour, we have Montreal-based Chilean artist Francisco González Rosas with uh, this video performance and 3D animation um, entitled Identity Templates for a Disordered Body. Using their theater background, um, they use performance to expose uh, the multiplicity of experiences in contemporary life. I think their piece is the perfect way to end this tour because they explore the multiplicity of identity and subjects and how their identity becomes an, you know, quote unquote, other by the system that perpetuates tokenism. In this video, Francisco critiques systemic and institutional tokenism by rendering their own body in a 3D modeling software and using augmented interfaces. Their body becomes an assimilated entity of objectification. Otherness is explored here to its absolute extreme, where equity, diversity, and inclusion mandates of institutions, for example, are exposed as superficial, as performative, and as cosmetic, and have not necessarily engaged systemic racism 
um, that is still prevalent within institutions and hence within uh, the broader art canon. Well, thank you everyone for joining us uh, on this curator tour. Uh, the exhibition will be up until June 30th uh, at Sur Gallery, and I hope you all can come to see it uh, in person. Thank you for joining us.